Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, today we present Chapter 5 of my whole darn CD collection. Yes, we, we are four chapters in, and I haven't even left the letter C yet. But I will be today. Spoiler alert. Uh, yes, the, here's this is the series where I show you every single CD that I own. Uh, guilty pleasures, not so guilty pleasures, and the whole bit. Uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. I have been enjoying bringing it to you. Uh, but I realized, uh, I mean, I already knew I was going to do this today, but then I realized in looking at my YouTube history, it's actually been an entire month since I've done Chapter 4 of this. So uh, I'm going to try to up the frequency of this and uh, bring it to you. I'm going to try and bring you two installments of it every month, just so that that way it won't take forever to complete. Because I estimated uh, at the beginning that this was going to take like 30 chapters to do my entire CD collection. Yes, I have that many CDs. Anyway, uh, before I get started on the alphabetical order CDs proper, the, the 90 CDs that I will be, be featuring in this video as I have in previous videos, I talk about the, um, the late arrivals, which is stuff that I've gotten from the portion of my collection before this part. Um, but after I did those parts of the collection. So if, I, if I'm making sense at all, uh, you would have seen these CDs in my individual chapters if I'd already had them. Uh, first of all, here is a, this is a brand new album uh, this year. It's, it's like a couple months old. It is the latest by Brian Adams, uh, So Happy It Hurts. Uh, I picked this up on a whim actually last week at Barnes & Noble, and it turns out it was much better than I thought it was going to be. I foolishly underestimated Brian Adams. He's still got his voice. He's just amazing. The songs are good. So, hey, you may be seeing that in my mid-year countdown. Yes, at the end of June, beginning of July, I will be t counting down my 10 favorite albums of 2022 so far. Uh, it's, it's, this, this is in lieu of the quarterly spank and platters that I had been doing. I just haven't had the motivation to do those lately. Uh, anyway, the, the only other recent arrival that I've had, yes, just two recent arrivals this time around, is an album by Roseanne Cash. It's called The List, and Roseanne is, of course, the daughter of Johnny Cash and a fantastic musician in her own right. Funny story with this one, I saw this one at uh, Epic Seconds. It was in their stack of stuff that they just recently got in but haven't put on the shelves yet, and I just looked at it and looked, checked out the track, track listing on the back, and it looked like something I might enjoy. So I just picked it up on Impulse for, I think it was $6, and I actually really enjoyed this. Uh, this is mostly, um, actually I think it is all, classic country and folk songs. Uh, and she actually has a, a surprising uh, array of guest stars on this album. Bruce Springsteen, Elvis Costello, Jeff Tweedy, Rufus Wainwright. She pulls in a list of celebrities along with a list of songs. Very good album. If, if you don't mind, uh, if, you're open, you're, if you're open to exposing yourself to country music and folk music, uh, give this one a try. This is an excellent album. Uh, one of the impulse buys that actually turned out to be a really, really good serendipitous buy. So yeah, and I already need a water break, sorry. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff blooming in the air, and this is our first weekend pretty much of the year that we've had seasonably warm temperatures. We're supposed to be uh, upper 60s, very low 70s, right now, but we the, the rain and clouds and stuff kept lingering and lingering, and we kept having temperatures like 10, 15 degrees below average, so finally, nice weekend out there. Anyway, as you will recall on my last chapter of my Hold On CD collection, we had just started in on Harry Connick Jr., but I stopped with his first one since that was the 90th CD I featured in that video, so let's just go ahead and pick right on up there, uh, from there. Uh, this is actually, now, I do well, 90 items, I guess you'd say, in my collection. Uh, some of them may be multi-disc titles, and this one actually is a three-disc set. It is his uh, a set of his albums 20, 25, and 30. And I actually found this. This one I found out in Pennsylvania at an FYE in Pennsylvania at a mall out there when I was visiting a good friend of mine out, uh, out there. So, yeah. This not only was a souvenir from that trip, since I still vividly remember picking it up, it's, uh, it's good music uh, on top of that. So yes, very good stuff. I mean, Harry Connick Jr., as I've mentioned before, can be hit and miss, <clears throat> and or some of the albums just have just taken me a while to get into. But uh, 
He's an artist that his, his albums never just hit you over the head as being awesome right away. They almost always grow on you. So that's something to keep in mind if you think about ch uh, dipping your toes into Harry Connick Jr. Uh, next one of his that I have is Blue Light. And this one actually was in my sister's collection. So she had a couple of uh, his albums. Then we have his foray into funk, rock kind of stuff. Well, more funk than rock. This is an album called She and this has one of his biggest hits, I Could Only Whisper Your Name, which is one of my favorite Harry Connick Jr. songs. And then we have his album To See You. This one has a lot of romantic ballads and stuff in it. And then this one, uh, I believe this was the other one that was in my sister's collection. Sorry, I have this annoying little uh, notification on my desktop that I want to get rid of. Um, I think this one was in my sister's collection as well. Songs I Heard. And this one is full of... Uh, songs from stage and movie musicals and other things like this one has uh, pure imagination from what is the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and it is actually a duet with Candyman kind of appropriate that song was not in the movie it was a, a Sammy Davis Jr. hit but a, a kind of a, a clever little uh, pairing of songs there and it opens up with supercalifragilisticexpialidocious from Mary Poppins and um, Ding Dong the Witch is Dead from uh, uh, The Wizard of Oz and Maybe from Annie. I mean, it's got all sorts of good stuff on here. Uh, You're Never Fully Dressed, which is another one from Annie. So, yeah, very fun, fun collection of songs. And then we're getting into his later years with the collection Only You, and this one has Save the Last Dance for Me, and that's one of my favorite um, uh, R&B soul songs from the 60s. I cannot remember who did, uh, was it the Platters that originally did that song? I cannot remember, but uh, suffice it to say, it's one of my favorites. And then a more recent album, Your Songs, which has uh, a lot of great songs. He covers Billy Joel's Just the Way You Are on here. And uh, the Elvis Presley classic, Can't Help Falling in Love With You. And the song, And I Love Her, which was, was that Barry Manilow? I cannot remember off the top of my head. And They Long to Be Close to You by The Carpenters. I love that song. So, yeah. And The Way You Look Tonight, a classic uh, pop standard from the Great American Songbook. And then his uh, another re recent album, Every Man Should Know. Not one of my favorites because it's mostly original songs, but hey, it's Harry. Like I said, his stuff grows on you. And then we have his album, That Would Be Me. And I love the cover image on this album because, I, as you can see, if you took a really good close-up look at it, it's a collage of musical instruments of various types that are made up to uh, to compose a picture of him, a portrait of him. Very, very clever cover, and a good album as well. So Then we are moving into um, American Idol territory. I guess you could say we've been in American Idol territory because Harry Connick Jr. was a judge on American Idol for several seasons. But here we have a straight-up American Idol winner, David Cook, with his self-titled album, Good Stuff, and his sophomore album, uh, This Loud Morning. I, I preferred David Archuleta over David Cook, but hey, David Cook was talented. I mean, he, his win was pretty much justified, I guess you could say. And then we have one of my all-time favorite soul and R&B singers, Sam Cooke. I love this guy's voice. What can what can you say about Sam Cooke? Fantastic. All the hits are on here. Uh, yeah. Too many to mention, really. And actually, saying I love Sam Cooke, but then I realize this is the only album of his that I have. Take that for what you will. Uh, then here we have an album that was from a, uh, a bargain bag last year. Uh, the Cosmic Rough Riders. Uh, the album was called Too Close to See Far. This is kind of... Uh, Oh, alt rock, I guess you'd say. Yeah. yeah great, great description, huh? And then we have uh, another Elvis, a very popular Elvis here, Elvis Costello. This is his uh, two disc greatest hits collection, which covers up through 2001. Not a huge Elvis Costello fan, but uh, enough. I like him enough to get a disc of the hits. Then we have a CD single, which I think I found this at. Uh, Everyday Music up in Portland. This is uh, Counting Crows with uh, featuring Vanessa Carlton with their cover of Big Yellow Taxi, the 
Joni Mitchell hit. I think it was Joni Mitchell. My, my brain is failing me at the moment. And then we have here, if you enjoy the Dixie Chicks, uh, you may not be aware of... Well, well, if you really, really do enjoy the Dixie Chicks, you are probably aware of this group. Uh, if not, if you're more of a casual fan or if you're new to the Chicks, um, this is a spin-off group of theirs, Courtyard Hounds, an excellent album. This was in my sister's collection. She enjoyed the Chicks, and uh, I gotta say, this was a great album as well. This is their self-titled album. They put out two albums. I have never picked up their second one. <coughs> Excuse me. And this guy is was a, an Australian... I don't, think he, I don't think he was an Australian Idol winner. He might have been on, like, Australia's Got Talent, or he might have might not have been a talent show person at all. But anyway, a very good um, uh, classic vocalist type singer, a uh, young guy with a great voice. Harrison Craig is his name. And this is his debut album, More Than a Dream. I, I saw a YouTube video of him and just really, really enjoyed his voice. He's just got a great Sinatra-esque voice, uh, kind of like uh, Seth MacFarlane in a way, um, and, and almost, almost as talented at, at a young age. And then his sophomore album, L-O-V-E. And then his third album, thus, and his latest album thus far, and this was done back in 2016. So it's been a while since he's done an album. Uh, this one is Kings of Vegas, where he does kind of the, the, the Rat Pack uh, singers. Uh, but yes, pretty much anything from the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, classic pop, I guess you could say, songbook, uh, you'll probably find on one of these three albums. Great, great stuff. Then we have, oh, and Belgian. He, he, this guy was an idol finalist. He was not a winner or a runner-up, but he was a finalist. I just couldn't remember which country he was in, and so I had to read the, uh, whatchamacallit on the back. He was a finalist in the Belgian Idol. Cannot remember what season, but his name is Born Crane, and uh, this is his first album, Walking in the Sun. And, oh, he does a cover... He does covers on pretty much every uh, one of his albums. Oh, he does a cover of Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cindy Lauper on this one. Interesting for a male singer to do a cover of that. And his sophomore album, Four Letter Word. And no, he doesn't sing about, you know, one of those four letter words. I think the four letter word in question is love, of course. What else would a young guy sing about, sing about right? And this one also has... Oh, Tonight, which was a song by New Kids on the Block, that way back in the day. A very, you know, it was a very, very minor hit, and it's pretty much a completely forgotten, forgotten song now. So a very strange choice of him to cover that song. And then his, mo his uh, no, not his most recent album, his third album, Anatomy, he's put out albums since this one. And this one... I guess there are no covers... Oh, no, actually, I think he does a cover of Larger Than Life, the uh, a, a Backstreet Boys song on here. So, And there's another song on here called John Travolta. So, uh, very good artist, uh, very very good voice on this guy. So, and then we have a classic Irish or Scottish band, the Carpen or the Cranberries. The Carpenters. The Cranberries. Uh, this is a uh, volume in their entry in the Icon series, the, the budget greatest hits. Uh, segment. Then we have an artist here. He is, uh, I like this guy. He is a Filipino, uh, he, he might be Filipino-American. I can't remember um, where he spends most of his time, if it's an American or, or not. Uh, popular in Southeast Asia, of course, since he's Filipino, and also very popular in France, which is kind of a strange, random country for him to be popular in, but he has been popular there. Uh, his name is Billy Crawford. And this is, this is his debut album, and this one he was very much pop kind of stuff. And he does... I thought he did a... I thought he did... <laughs> yes, I can speak. I thought he did a cover of... Uh, oh, yeah, You've Got a Friend, the Carol King song. He does a cover of that one here. I was going to say, there's a cover in the track list somewhere, and that was it. And his sophomore album, Ride. And this one was... Uh, on this one he gets a bit more into an R&B and slightly hip-hop direction which is where he is for most of his discography. And this is one where there were, uh, with this album, he pretty much really gained his popularity in France. And uh, his third album, Big City, gets a little bit further into the hip-hop thing. 
his fourth album, It's Time. And uh, yeah, I think this was, I was just looking at, uh, to see if I could wear, tell what uh, country this was issued from, what this was from. And then his most, I believe, most recent album, which is actually a covers album, this one is called Groove. And uh, it's very cool. He's got a couple of uh, Michael Jackson covers, Rock With You, and what was the other one? Human Nature does a great job in both of those. Uh, and he actually does another version of You've Got a Friend on this album, as well as Steal Away, which was... I'm not going to waste time looking it up. I can't remember who it was. And uh, Let's Groove, which was a Cool in the Gang cover, I think it was. Uh, could it be I'm Falling in Love? Lovely Day, a Bill Withers song he covers on here. And uh, How Sweet It Is, a James Taylor song. So this is just a great... Oh, and Mercy, Mercy, Mercy Me, which was a Marvin Gaye song. Good stuff. And I've kind of been waiting for him to put out another album, and I can't tell... don't remember when this was done, because there is actually, oddly enough, no copyright on the cover of the CD... And there, I, there's probably one on the label of the disc itself, but it's right where it's in white print, and it's right where there is white on the uh, in the picture. So, yes, very helpful. Anyway, I want to say it was like 2007. Oh no, the uh, this one was 2007. So, uh, 2009, 2010, I think, was when Groove was put out. So it's been a while since he put out a new album. Anyway. Moving on from Billy Crawford, we have the Crash Test Dummies. And this is their a great album, one of the best albums of the 90s, uh, The Ghosts That Haunt Me. And then another great album. Actually, I think this one might be a little bit better. Uh, God Shuffled His Feet. This was the follow-up to that album. So, yes, I don't have... I used to have their the next album in there, uh, A Worm's Life, it's called. But I didn't care for it all that much, so I got rid of it. Then we have a blues singer who has actually has a connection to Eugene, to a, a local connection. He's actually, I don't know if he still lives in the Eugene Springfield area, but he used to at least. Uh, Robert Cray. Uh, this is his album, Strong Persuader. This is like his third or fourth album. And uh, my sister actually had uh, the greatest hits album of his in her collection, and, and I enjoyed it enough to that I explored his past catalog and have, what, five of his albums? This is his sophomore album, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Followed by Midnight Stroll. Then we have I Was Warned, his next album. And then Shame and a Sin, which is the most recent album of his that I have. I'm thinking about exploring a bit further in his discography, but I just haven't done it yet. And uh, this one... I've been thinking about upgrading from this version to the two-disc set that I saw at Barnes & Noble the other day. Still thinking about it. Uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival. This is their single-disc Chronicle Greatest Hits collection. Uh, this one was actually, I think this one was in my sister's CD collection. So that's one reason why I've kind of hesitated to part with it. But, you know, I enjoy their stuff enough that I think I would like to have their two-disc hits collection. Then we have an alt-rock group uh, from the 90s. No, the 2000s. This one is from 2001. I've uh, thought about exploring this group a little more, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, Creeper Lagoon is the name of this group. They put some. They have some uh, electronic elements in their, in their sound a little bit here and there. Uh, an interest, interesting sound from this group. Uh, Take Back the Universe and Give Me Yesterday is the name of this album. And I believe it is their most successful album so far. And uh, this one, I believe, was from a bargain bag. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Marshall Crenshaw, Life is Too Short. I uh, actually have not listened to it since the bargain bag episode, so I need to listen to it again sometime soon to make sure I still want to keep it. Then we have one of the greatest artists to come out of the 70s. Uh, this is an, yet another CD that was in my sister's collection. Jim Croce, uh, his greatest hits, Photographs and Memories. Good, good album. Uh, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown, uh, Time in a Bottle, Working at the Car Wash Blues. Uh, you, I'll have to say I love you in a song. You don't mess around with Jim. I mean, it's got all the great hits on here. 
why it's called His Greatest Hits, an apt title. Anyway, this next one is uh, a classic crooner from the 30s and 40s, Bing Crosby. Gotta have this one. A couple of my favorite songs of his uh, that pretty much I could only find on this collection, maybe, unless I, unless my memory's uh, wrong, are, let's see, what are the, what are the songs? Swinging on, a, Swinging on a Star is one of my favorite ones. And what was the other one? My Memory is Kind of Crap Today. Oh, Play a Simple Melody. That was the other one, I think. So, yeah. A fun old crooner if you like that kind of stuff. And now we're getting into uh, one of the... Actually, take a drink here first. Getting into one of the artists, uh, one of the few artists whose complete discography, complete studio albums discography I have, and that would be Cheryl Crow. This is her debut album, Tuesday Night Music Club, followed by her sophomore album, Self-Titled. Then we have The Globe Sessions, and I do have one of her live albums, Cheryl Crow and Friends, live from Central Park. Very good stuff. Yes, this has uh, Eric Clapton, Dixie Chicks, Chrissy Hines, Sarah McLaughlin, Bill Murray, Stevie Nicks, and Keith Richards. Quite the lineup. And then on with her st uh, studio albums, Come On, Come On, a very good one. And we have... Oh, sorry. My mind was wandering. Then we have Wildflower. Uh, two or three of these, actually maybe more, were in my sister's collection. Uh, definitely Wildflower and Detours. Those were in my in her collection, and I think I think two of her early ones were also in her, my sister's collection. Then we have the more recent of her albums, 100 Miles from Memphis, along with Feels Like Home, her kind of a foray into a bit into the country and folk sound, which was very good. She's one of the artists who could easily do that. Uh, it's it was not not out of her wheelhouse to do that. Then Be Myself, and finally her final, at least for now, studio album, Threads, which I I liked but I didn't love, despite the amazing array of guest artists. I mean, pretty much a who's who of music guests on this album. But one of the drawbacks was its length. It was 17 tracks and pretty much the entire length of, this, of the disc, like an hour and a quarter long. So I think it, it would have behooved her to cut like four or five of the songs and, and refine the ones that she kept. You know, not, not many of the songs in that were really memorable. That was the other thing about it was, you know, she had a whole lot of songs and a whole lot of guest stars, but none of the songs were really, really strong, I felt. Then again, it's been a while since I've listened to it, so I guess I need to go back and listen to it again to see if I'm wrong. Then, moving on from Cheryl Crow, we have Crowded House, one of my favorite artists from the 90s and 80s, actually. This one uh, was uh, 80, 86, 87, oh, earlier in the 80s than I thought. I guess this is their self-titled debut album. I uh, guess um, Don't Dream It's Over is obviously their big, big hit. And this album is just packed with great songs. This actually, I think, is uh, my favorite of their albums. Uh, World Where You Live, Now We're Getting Somewhere, uh, Something So Strong is another fantastic song, and uh, Hole in the River is another great one. So, yeah. Front to back, a great track listing. Then we have their sophomore album, Temple of Low Men. And let's see, um, Into Temptation is a great song off this one. And Better Be Home Soon, a great song. And, uh, if I get out of here, their third album, Woodface, another great one. Um, it's Only Natural and Fall at Your Feet are great songs. One of my favorite songs of their in, from their entire discography is As Sure As I Am. Fantastic song. But that wasn't a single, so that's kind of one of those buried album cuts that you might miss unless you know about it. And then their fourth album, Together Alone. This is the most recent album of theirs that I have. I have tried getting into their more recent stuff, but uh, just has not, hasn't grabbed onto me like their previous albums did. Uh, let's see, what are the great songs? Locked Out and Private Universe are great songs on here. Distant Sun is another fantastic one. So, yes. A great band that um, I don't think 
has really gotten the attention that they deserve, especially not for their early work. So go check it out. And then we move on to one of my favorite jazz and jazz pop singers of all time, Jamie Cullum. This is his debut album, I believe, uh, Pointless Nostalgic. Then his next album, 20-something. Great song, great album. Uh, I think this was the one that uh, the one that I first listened to, although this is actually a different version of it than I had originally. This is the British, yeah, the UK import that has like uh, four bonus tracks on it. And then, uh, yeah, most of the Jamie Cullum albums I have are either uh, overseas, you know, um, foreign issues, or uh, deluxe versions, or both. This one, for instance, uh, Catching Tales, and I think this is probably my favorite Jamie Cullum album. This is the Japanese import version, and it has, uh, again, four bonus tracks on it. And you can see the Obi strip on there. And I actually... <laughs> The one that I had before this one was the American Deluxe Edition that had a DVD with it. And when I bought this one with the bonus tracks, I actually uh, pulled the DVD out of the uh, other one and kept it for my own nefarious purposes. So, But I, I didn't try selling it, and actually no store would buy it if it didn't have the DVD with it like it originally had. So I just ended up putting that version in the Goodwill stack. So. Anyway, next up is his following album, The Pursuit, and I gotta say, I kind of like the cover of this, even though I am a strong opponent of the idea of destroying musical instruments, it's still, it's kind of a, it's a provocative image, isn't it? And anyway, this one is uh, actually a uh, bonus track edition with a DVD as well, so, yeah, nice long listing of the uh, CD and then the DVD tracks. And then this next one is also a, this is actually a two CD plus DVD version, and this is again a Japanese import of his album Momentum, uh, another great album. And this actually is uh, the first place that I discovered another artist you will be seeing probably months from now, Laura Mvula. She is a great, great um, soul and uh, R&B pop singer. Uh, and the, how I first discovered her is she duets with Jamie Cullum on a track on this album. Uh, or does she? No, yeah. Actually, it's on the second disc of this album, so it's not on the regular edition. So you'd have to get the deluxe edition or this uh, super deluxe edition. Uh, sad, Sad World is the song on which she uh, also sings. But, uh, yep, got the uh, Obi, uh, the Obi wraparound from this one. So, yeah. And yes, I'm not a huge fan of the square bound uh, packaging for CDs, but that's the only way to get that one with the two discs and a DVD was in the uh, square bound edition. But what the heck? Small price to pay. And then we have a covers album, Interlude. This is uh, an album where he did uh, songs, you know, classic jazz standards and all that stuff. And uh, he actually duets again with Laura Mvula on this album, as well as Gregory Porter, another great soul and R&B singer. And then we have his most recent studio album, Taller, or as it would be called in England, Tula. Anyway, uh, this one, I'm not a huge fan of this artist, but this has a huge sentimental value to me because not only was it in my sister's collection, but I actually helped her order it off of Amazon while she was here visiting. Uh, she would visit for like sometimes three or four weeks at a time. We'd Sometimes we'd get a whole month uh, visit out of her when she would come up to, to visit. So uh, yeah, I helped her order it. The Burton Cummings collection, She's a she was a big fan of the Guess Who, and Burton Cummings was a member of the Guess Who, so I could not part with this one. And speaking of which, it has been forever since I've listened to it, so I really need to listen to it again. And then we have a, uh, you know, Burton Cummings was a tie-in to uh, the Guess Who, and now we have a tie-in to Weezer. Yes, Rivers Cuomo. This is Alone, the home recordings of Rivers Cuomo. Pretty good stuff. I don't know that I don't know that I like it as much as the Weezer albums, but what the heck. And I got a, a record store. Indie Record Store exclusive, 
uh, Not Alone, Rivers Cuomo and Friends Live at Fingerprints. And this actually has, there was actually, you know, this was the CD version and there's also a DVD that also came in a jewel case and I decided to go ahead and piggyback them both into a one disc uh, thing like that. So there you go. I just uh, threw away the inserts and recycled or repurposed that one jewel case. Yay for saving space. Then we have, um, this is a band that I sh probably should um, explore a little bit more, but as it is uh, so far, all I have of theirs is a Greatest Hits collection. This is The Cure. Uh, what better place to start then with their hits? N'est-ce pas? That's French for isn't it so? That, that's a learning moment on my channel. Anyway, gosh, we are getting through this uh, particular chapter of my CD collection very quickly. I'm like three, three quarters of the way done, and we've only, we're only at 31 minutes. So I hope I haven't been going too fast for you guys. I just have so much fun with this that apparently I'm going fast this time. Anyway, up next we have Miley Cyrus. Uh, I only have two albums of hers, her two most recent albums, Younger Now, which I actually, I bought this one on my own back shortly after it came out. Wasn't crazy about it, got rid of it, and apparently, and uh, after I bought her next one, uh, Plastic Hearts, I decided, hmm, maybe I was too hasty in getting rid of this, and Noah actually had a copy that he was he was going to put on Discogs, or he already did put on Discogs, and I bought. I can't remember if I bought it or if he just gave it to me, but thank you, Noah. That's, uh, my own foolish foolishness at hastily getting rid of CDs, um, and I took advantage of Noah by the whatever I'm trying to say, the, uh, you know, undoing that and uh, in taking advantage of Noah in the process. Anyway. <clears throat> Not only is my brain not up to snuff today, or my memory, but my structuring coherent sentences is also apparently suffering today. Next up we have another a bargain bag um, acquisition from last year, D-A-R-K, or Dark. And uh, this, this came out back in 2016, and one thing that I commented on at the time in the bargain bag video was they seem to be oddly prescient with the pandemic and stuff, because not only are they masked, but the name of the album, Science Agrees. Did they know something seven years ago that we didn't? Makes you think. Maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, no no provocative song titles, at least. But uh, yeah. just thought was, that was really interesting. Then we have a boy band. And I have mentioned before, <clears throat> I believe in previous chapters of this uh, CD collection series that I have a bit of a soft spot for boy bands. Uh, it started with uh, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys back in the late 90s and uh, have followed a few of them, a few of them ever since. Uh, this is this is one of them, D-Side. This was a British boy band and this is their debut album Stronger Together and this is again a Japanese import. Oh, there's the Obi strip. It was hiding behind Oh, it was hiding behind this. And this is another thing I've talked about how I take, um, if I have a couple of CD singles, I actually do take a, a two-disc case and make my own cover art and uh, piggyback the singles together. Well, sometimes when there's only one CD single of a band that I like, I will piggyback it onto the, uh, the album and I just cut out the track listing part of the, C of the original insert and put the single on the backside of it. So that's what I did in this case. And yes, uh, great songs. And th this is this one thing that uh, they like to do sometimes with Japanese uh, CDs and especially with boy bands. They pack the track listing to capacity. Check this out. 19 tracks on here. Uh, but yeah, they're all really good. <clears throat> I actually have their second and third albums in my Discogs inventory right back here. Uh, they changed they changed directions after this album. First of all, two of the members left the group, so they were only a three-piece after this album. Plus, their second and third albums are much more ballad-heavy. 
so I'm not really fond of those albums. I, sh I ought to listen to them because they've been in my Discogs inventory for months, probably a couple of years by now, and they have not sold, so I'm going to listen to them again just to see, do I really want to go ahead and keep them? Because I have been able to conserve my CD uh, space a bit, so maybe I, maybe I have room for them again. I will listen to them again and see uh, if I change my mind. Anyway, as I finish uh, babbling on and on about D-Side, let's move on to Daft Punk. Random Access Memories. Uh, this, unfortunately, is their, the only album of theirs that I have right now. Uh, thinking about picking up their earlier albums uh, since they have finally now been reissued. Uh, so, yeah, maybe, maybe. Those are one of those things that's way down on my shopping list. Uh, other stuff that I want more than that. And then we have an indie rock band from the late 90s. They're called Dada, and uh, they put out three or four albums. This is the only one of theirs that I have right now. Um, it is self-titled. And a couple of really good songs on here. Call, uh, one of them is California Gold, and the other one is Beautiful Turn Back Time Machine. I, I'm a bit of a sci-fi geek, and time travel is one of the sci-fi concepts that I kind of have enjoyed over the years. So that kind that song title caught my attention and appealed to me. It's a pretty good song too. And a good band if you uh, have never checked them out. Next up we have an album from the 80s, 1987. It is Terence Trent Darby. He is an R&B and soul singer and this was his debut album. Introducing Introducing the Hardline according to Terence Trent Darby. Uh, yes, Wishing Well is his big hit song and there was another one that uh, I thought there was another one that was a, a fairly popular single. Was it Sign Your Name? Was that the other uh, modestly popular single that he had? I can't remember. And then dipping again into the uh, world idols uh, pool, we have from Sweden. Yeah, from Sweden he was, I don't think he was the winner. I think he might have been the runner-up. Or maybe he was the winner. I can't remember. Uh, Darren, that's his name. Uh, he has a last name, but I can't remember what it is at the moment. But yes, this is his debut album, self-titled. And I like that one enough to buy his sophomore album, The Anthem. Pretty good stuff. I have to say, Sweden puts out some of the most delicious pop music ever. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something in the water or what. But anyway. And we also have, we have another Darren here, but this is one that you probably have heard of. Bobby Darren. Uh, this is the uh, Definitive Pop Collection, a two-disc set of 30, yeah, 30 tracks on this one. Good stuff. Uh, it starts out with Splish Splash, one of his very first hits. And then, of course, it has Dream Lover, Mac the Knife, Beyond the Sea, all of his hits. That's why it's called the De Definitive Pop Collection. There was a different hits CD in, uh, that I got from my sister's collection, but I didn't really care for that one because it was kind of strange. It had narration uh, in between the songs, and the narration kind of overlapped some the beginnings of some of the songs. So, and I wasn't crazy about that. So, I had already started a collection of other volumes in this uh, definitive collection series. So, when I saw that about Bobby Darren one, I decided to pick it up. And I think this one was, yeah, it's got the uh, the notch in the side of it that you can see right right here. Uh, it was still sealed, but it was a cutout, hence the notch there. And I think I got it for three ninety nine. So yeah, and that was at at an FYE, I think. So yeah, at a store where you almost never see those kinds of bargains, I got that bargain. So there you go. And now this one uh, not only feeds the classic crooner uh, uh, column, if you will, but also uh, is a tie-in to well. Not really a tie-in because uh, it's not an official uh, tie-in merchandise to Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but this guy did appear as a classic 60s crooner on several episodes in later seasons of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And this album was put out after the show ended, and it features some of the songs that he sang on the show, but not the recordings of, that were featured on the show. These were new recordings just of the same songs. James Darren. Uh, and he was actually an actor and singer way back in the 60s. And so he's just kind of, you know, kept his singing career going. And, well, and his acting career, obviously, he was in Star Trek. So, uh, yes, this one's from the heart. And this, I think, was his first album in a long, long time. 
Uh, his, his appearances on Deep Space Nine kind of uh, re-energized his career and uh, that uh, yielded that album as well as a follow-up album because of you. So, yeah. Good singer, probably not as great a voice as uh, Tony Bennett or, uh, oh, what's the other guy? Johnny Mathis or those guys. A bit of a rougher voice. Uh, his, his voice hasn't aged as well over the years as Tony Bennett or uh, Johnny Mathis or some of those others, but still very fun to listen to in my opinion. So there you go. Then we have the Dave Matthews Band. Uh, I've got uh, their first four albums, Under the Table and Dreaming, as well as Crash, uh, featuring their hit Crash Into Me, as well as, um, what was the other one? Oh, Too Much, I think. I thought there was another fairly popular song, uh, single off this one. I can't remember, but anyway. And their third album, Before These Crowded Streets. And here's a hot take for you. This album, their fourth album, is my favorite album of theirs, even though for Dave Matthews Band purists or devotees, I think this is kind of an un underappreciated or not particularly well-loved album every day. I really enjoy this one. And it's got, uh, let's see, I Did It is the opening track. That's really good. The Space Between was a big hit single of theirs. That was really, really fun. Uh, Dreams of Our Fathers is a fantastic song. And uh, there's a song on here that, uh, that features um, Carlos Santana, I believe. So, yeah, a good album, I think. Better than I think a lot of uh, Dave Matthews Band fans give it credit for. Then we have, here's another uh, finalist in Idol. I don't think he was a winner. And this is Norwegian Idol we're talking about here. David. And I this is that's just the name he went by. I cannot remember what his last name is. But uh, I actually found a video of his song. I believe it's called Wild at Heart, uh, the title track of the album. I uh, found a video online at random one day, long, long, long time ago and uh, went looking for the album, and after a couple of years, I finally found it. So, yeah, pretty good album, I gotta say. Not one of my favorite uh, Idol alumni albums, but still good. But here we have one of my favorite uh, female pop singers of all time, Doris Day. This is The Essential, Doris Day, a great, great album. It's got all of her hits. Sentimental Journey, uh, well, I could list the entire track listing. I don't want to bore you, but yeah. Fantastic singer. Lovely, lovely voice on her. And then, well, from one day to another. <laughs> pun. Howie Day, uh, a um, indie pop, indie rock artist, I guess you'd say. Uh, this is his debut album, Australia. And then his most popular album, Stop All the World Now. Uh, this is the... Uh, uh, deluxe edition with bonus tracks and his third album Sound the Alarm good stuff I like this guy uh, not one of my favorites but still very good uh, good enough for me to uh, buy three albums of him of his and then uh, well we just got to take things one day at a time <laughs> stop me I'm just full of them Spencer Day uh, this is he is a jazz pop singer and uh, the, the light's a little bright here. Oh, there it is. Vagabond is the name of this album. And uh, pretty good stuff. I I've, I had his second album after this, um, but it just kind of, kind of uh, just kind of lost interest in it after a while. Uh, but I still enjoy this one. I enjoy it enough to keep. So, yeah. Pretty good artist. And, uh, and then up to our last artist and the final two CDs of today's video. Uh, this is an artist who was uh, kind of an indie rock, a bit of a, a bit of a quirky indie rock band. They're called Dead Eye Dick, and this is their uh, debut album, A Different Story. Uh, the song New Age Girl. You have heard that song in at least one or, at least one or two movies, and uh, probably also some soundtrack, you know, uh, TV soundtracks and all that stuff. The song was like everywhere back in the mid-90s, uh, and that song is a pretty good capsulization of their sound. A little bit wacky, a little bit weird. But the good songs don't stop with that one. Um, I, and I mean, New Age Girl was pretty much their wackiest song, but they weren't all wacky. These guys are kind of like bare-naked ladies in a way. 
the wacky weird songs get all the attention but they can actually be pretty uh, uh, pretty serious to an extent on other songs uh, perfect family for instance uh, talks about a, a dysfunctional family and with with a little bit of a uh, quirk a wacky twist you know a little bit of censor a dark sense of humor is basically what uh, uh, these guys are good at and the song Marguerite is a love song that's really really good and uh, sentimental crap is another good song on here and the title track different story is really good as well and their sophomore album whirl that's, that's a really good song as well uh, blues king is the opening track that's pretty good and uh, paralyze me is another really good song and then uh, give it a shot is quite possibly my favorite song of of the whole band's discography well this is this is their whole discography according to me the only two albums there's that I have but uh, yeah give it a shot is a great song uh, so yeah well that is it for chapter five of my whole darn CD collection there we go I've got to take it off take it off the uh, keyboard shelf before the keyboard shelf collapses I don't know if it's built to handle that kind of weight but anyway so yes I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please give it a like, give it a share, tell your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and ch catch up on my past videos. Uh, this video is in a playlist with my the other chapters in my uh, Hold On CD collection. Check it out. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my YouTube friends who are listed in the description. Uh, check out their channels as well. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time. And remember, Life's too short to be a music snob. See ya.